Is it? We're live. Uh, no, the we're live. Okay, we are live right now. Bob, say hello to our Facebook friends. Hi there. Look, it's Alderman Riley. Alderman Brendan Riley. We're live on Facebook, the and then we'll be live on the radio. Thank you so much. Right here. Yeah, you can sit right here. Gotta work that mic a little close. Yeah, right there. Yeah, you got it. Uh, sorry we couldn't join you last night. I went shopping with my daughter and out to dinner, and it was so late when I got back. And we thought, hey, why not give you guys a treat and see what it's like when our guest is in here. I think we're getting ready to start, aren't we? Bob? Bob can't hear anything I say when he has his headphones on. All right. I think we're coming on now. Is this a simulcast now? Is that what this is? This is a simulcast with uh, our Facebook Live friends. If you are on Facebook, if it's handy nearby, go to Sarat and Murciano, and you can see what's going on in the studio. Not just hear it. Both. On WLS Radio, it's Alderman Brendan Riley. Welcome, Alderman. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me back. And uh, for those who don't know, 42nd Ward, that's um, parts of downtown, parts of near north, the loop. Is that about it? Yeah. Well, basically, where all the really tall buildings are. That's pretty much the 42nd Ward. <laughs> Good way to describe it. Uh, first, let's uh, get into this controversy with you. Uh, and the other day, I guess you said that uh, you hope Chicago's Riverwalk doesn't end up like San Antonio, Texas Riverwalk. Quote, cheap and crappy looking, end quote. <laughs> By the way, you ruined it for me because I've been dying to go to San Antonio to see oh. what their Riverwalk was like. What was that all about? Okay, and, and actually, and I'd encourage you to go to San Antonio. It's actually a great, a great town. In a former life, I was a telecom executive, so I spent a fair amount of time in San Antonio. Oh. And it's a really lovely place to visit. Uh, Perhaps I could have chosen my words a bit differently. Um, I'm sure my face is on many dartboards in Texas. Uh, but it was interesting. Uh, it, it, I made some remarks at a big town hall meeting in Streeterville, uh, right here in this neighborhood. And there were some concerns about the future aesthetic of the Chicago Riverwalk and what people can expect to see there when we're finished. And so uh, perhaps I shouldn't have drawn the comparison, but uh, I do honestly believe that... Um, our space, our river walk, will be far more of a, a public, a true public open space and promenade, whereas in San Antonio, uh, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, um, but that really is a heavily programmed uh, private space, at least in the central business district of San Antonio, that's really meant to help uh, facilitate the sale of alcohol. It's really a big outdoor party uh, every night on that river walk, and that's one way to do it. But I think with the investment we've made in Chicago on this riverfront, we want to make sure this is a space for everyone, family. So it's not just about commerce or getting drunk or having a party. Uh, it's a space that everyone can enjoy. So is that what you consider crappy? Well, <laughs> again, I think you know, there are a lot of those little tchotchke shops you can go and, and buy, you know, the big Texas Star and yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. And we just we want to make sure that we, we hold our river walk to a slightly higher aesthetic. So I, I know I stepped in it when the Dallas Morning News is defending San Antonio. <coughs> <laughs> Something's up. Right? Dallas never sticks up. They the never do that. Yeah. Well, ours uh, is looking good so far, and the official opening of the uninterrupted promenade, uh, which runs along the river from Lakeshore Drive to Lake Street, uh, will feature a day-long celebration this Saturday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., and it'll be kind of a preview of uh, what we can enjoy through October, won't it? That's exactly right. It's going to be a big celebration citywide. We're hoping everyone comes down from all the neighborhoods and it's, it's really a family-focused event. There'll be music, there'll be food, there'll be entertainment, some cultural exhibits and opportunities. Um, it's a great way to, to see the city. Um, you know, we, Mayor Emanuel gets a lot of credit for helping secure the, the federal funding we needed for this project. Uh, and it's a $100 million uh, no-interest federal loan. And we needed to figure out a way to service that loan. And the great news is that uh, I had suggested that we rebid all the city-owned docks uh, they hadn't been bid for 20 years, so all these docks are being given away, essentially, to folks that are making millions of dollars on the river. By rebidding those docks, the windfall was such that it's servicing a big chunk of, of that debt. Uh, the rest of that will be covered by the concessions down there that are incredibly successful. We've seen them double their revenue in just one year. Alderman and Brendan Riley, 42nd Ward, uh, with us in our studios today. And um, so when you see, when you visualize what the finished product is going to be, like, how do you see that? What, 
What are people going to be able to do? Who's going to have access to it? And can we have a few bars and drinks? Sure. <laughs> well, we, we have them already. Don't we, we have them already, we yeah. Do, we do. And yeah. actually, uh, I was asked uh, last year to consider allowing people to have open container and just walk up and down the river walk with drinks. And we made the decision not to do that. Uh, we, we certainly have carved out spaces on the river walk where you can have a, a glass of wine or a beer and sit down and eat and enjoy the view. Uh, but we didn't want to heavily program the river walk with a lot of alcohol. Uh, that, I think, discourages families from coming and enjoying it. But in the future, to your question, um, each of the uh, sections between the bridges are programmed differently. Some sections are open space, passive space. Others are for cultural exhibits or performances. Others are for retail. Uh, we also have activated the river walk with kayaking and canoes and, and watercraft. That's all stuff that you're going to see more of as it continues to develop. I want to ask you about what happened in the city council yesterday, because I think the last time we spoke, I went on one of my rants about uh, valet parkers yes, taking public spaces. And I know it's important to restaurants and other businesses to have this service, but what were they doing and uh, what did you correct in the city council yesterday? Sure. So, unfortunately, one of the big issues I have to deal with downtown is helping manage traffic flow and loading. And unfortunately, the model, the valet business model is such that they hog a lot of spaces and they double park cars and they create traffic congestion. Uh, what we found is that uh, a number of valet operators now are continuing to provide valet service long after that restaurant is closed or long before they're open. And that's a problem. Why is that a problem? Uh, because when the restaurant or retailer is open, there's a responsible adult on site representing that brand. And they look at this valet as an extension of their brand. Um, so they hold their valets more accountable. But when that business is closed, there's no one there keeping an eye on what they're up to. And we found through our enforcement missions that it's those valets that are operating outside of the business hours of their client tend to be the ones that are doing the really bad stuff, like parking cars without valid driver's licenses or suspended licenses, no insurance, no off-street garage leases, which we require so they don't hog all the parking. Yeah, are they supposed to have a certain percentage of spaces available off-site uh, at, at a garage so they don't take all the public spaces? That is correct, and there's a calculation you have to do to, to figure out how many uh, spaces you must lease. Uh, there was an investigation done last year by the city that showed uh, that almost two-thirds of the valet companies weren't complying with the lease requirement. And by the way, what I love about the fact that we're experimenting with you, by the way, this is only our second time doing Facebook Live yeah. during the broadcast. So if, if people have questions and we have time to get to them, ask us on our Facebook page, Serata Murciano, and then I will relay the questions for you. I am your guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> we, we love it. When, 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 the, when, when the whole project is complete, are you going to be able to walk on the river, walk like straight through across and then straight back? I mean, is that possible to do even now? You, you can pretty much get to the lake. You can front pretty right much, now. right? Uh, we still have more work and development to do on the very eastern end of the river walk, where Wanda Vista Tower is going up above Wacker Drive, at the very end of Wacker Drive. Um, there are some opportunities for us to better develop that space. So yes, the future of this river walk is it's only going to get longer heading east. Um, and it kind of caps out at Lake Street on the west end. Uh, but we've done some stuff with private development on the west side of the river uh, where we're having private developers construct river walk space and open space right there. Uh, and I negotiate that as we're uh, going through these large planned development projects. I notice you shaved the beard off. Does that mean you're getting ready for a big political <laughs> run, a, a higher <laughs> office perhaps? No, I, my, my, my wife told me to clean up my act, and so uh, so off went the beard. And, of course, we don't have the Blackhawks in the playoffs uh, right oh, now. Oh, that's right. That's don't why remind us. Beard. Oh, you get a break. It's, gonna, it's getting hot anyway. <laughs> what's, right? the, uh, what's the next big item on the city council's agenda next time? Uh, you know, I, we've got a, a lot of issues in front of us. You know, I think the one that... Uh, the administration is struggling to, to untangle is how on earth we're going to keep the Chicago public schools open. Uh, as you all know, uh, the state of Illinois hasn't passed a budget in over two years, uh, and the city, the, the city schools are owed over uh, half a billion dollars. And to continue to provide a, a high level of service for our students, um, some very tough choices will need to be made. But we shouldn't even be in this position. The bottom line is guys, guys and gals down in Springfield need to kind of get together and enough with the politics a lot of folks are suffering for the lack of a budget, and I think everyone in Springfield shares some blame there. Uh, but it is having direct and meaningful impacts on students and the elderly and uh, the infirm and, and the poor. 
and, and we really need to get this thing straightened out. The city of Chicago, I think, our taxpayers have been forced to shoulder an incredible burden while the state is rudderless, essentially. Um, and I don't think Chicago taxpayers can afford to continue to shoulder that big of a burden. 42nd Ward Alderman Brandon Riley, always good to catch up with you and uh, try to keep the traffic moving and the parking spaces open uh, downtown in the Loop and on the near north. Uh, that should be easy. Oh, sure, no problem. <laughs> thank but, you so much for joining us this morning well, thanks for having on our you. little experiment, too. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and uh, coming up, you know, it had to happen, the uh, most popular toy, the big hot trend, the big gizmo. Now there's a safety issue with it. I'll tell you about that after the news. Breaking news out of Washington. Now reporting that Republican okay, well, there you have it. Um, we love this idea that you can take part in some of our interviews. So, um, yeah, we have to give you better advance warning so you can have some questions ready. But we will do that. Thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, you're off the hook. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, Bob, are we having Facebook? Uh, we didn't tonight? get to it. We had a call from Lisa. We didn't have, have time to do it, but uh, oh, talking about San Antonio. Oh, make sure nobody falls in the river. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Okay, we'll do it. <laughs> All right, we'll see you later tonight. Thank you for joining us maybe on Facebook tonight. Live. Maybe tonight. It's Thursday. Do we do two a day? Well, we don't do them on the weekend, so All maybe right. we'll, we will see you later. Okay, bye.